Hey everybody, Marcos Vieques is here being joined with Joe Cortez. And Joe, the madness of Mayweather McGregor, finally over. We got a good fight. I thought it was a good fight. Uh, you were very close with the McGregor camp. You saw all the sparring, all the training, and there's still been a, a lot of talk about what happened in the sparring session. Uh, the one more in specific with the knockdown. When you were there, describe what happened and really everything that went on before, during, and then after. Well, I'll tell you, when I first got there, it was a, a new experience for me because trying to uh, break in a fighter who's an MMA uh, fighter crossing over to boxing, he did not know any of the rules in boxing. He knew some, but not really like, hands-on. So I got in there with him when we started doing sparring sessions with other fighters. Then one day they bring in Paulie Malinaji to do uh, eight rounds with him. Then another time they brought him to do another 12 rounds with him. And it was a, a sparring session. You know, when we have sparring sessions, and sometimes there's pushes, there's knockdowns, and, and there's whatever, you know, and there's slips and whatnot. And we, we don't know. It's only a sparring session. So we don't really take any particular action, per se. Uh, I was there mainly to teach him, don't do this, don't do that. Uh, like, you know, holding and tapping behind the head or, or hitting your point, striking him when he's on the floor or something like that. You know, stuff like that. But when, he, when, they, when it was that, that, that encounter with him and Paulie, they were throwing punches and they, they both were, they were all over the place. It was, it, it was like a real fight. They were, it was competitive. Yeah, it was competitive. They had like bare blood at that moment and there was some pushing going on. There was some punching going on. A combination of a lot of things. I had to stop the action to keep control of the, the sparring session. And in one of those sessions there, one of those rounds, but they were throwing punches. There were some punches thrown by both fighters. One guy hit the other one, the other hit. And you know what? There was a knockdown. And I don't even know if it was a knockdown or if it was a push. And being that it was a sparring session, I was using, I, I paid, we were paying no, no close attention to what it was. So I really can't say it was a knockdown. I can't say it was a slip. It was just a freaky thing that happened. And it was just like, oh, they, he got up, wiped off his glove. We let it keep going like, like nothing ever happened. So I... I didn't never give give it any gave it any thought until I saw on the social media they put the pictures out there. I said, wait, wait, that was last night. That, was that a knock? I wait, a minute. I didn't call it a knockdown there, but then they gave us a sparring session. But I tell you, you know what? I tell a lot of fans out there, if you guys want to see this thing happen for real, I said, get get Paulie and McGregor. He gave a good account of himself fighting Mayweather. Let let, let him and Paulie duke it out now. Let that make a, do a ten round exhibition. Yes, he shut everybody up. <laughs> you know, when you saw the clip again, yeah. did you think that it was a knockdown or it was a push? Because it kind of looked like the hand was kind of like behind the head, but yeah, was, he Paulie was also kind of off balance too. Yeah, it was kind of like a. I, I don't think I would have. Yeah. I don't know what I would have done. It was, it was so crazy. It was a sparring session. Mm. You know, it was like kind of a push, kind of a... It's like a weird thing. It was, kind of, yeah, and it was something like, maybe I would have not called it a knockdown because it was it was kind of like, it was not a real fight. It was just like a sparring session, and I can't say it was a knockdown. I can't say it was a, it was a, a slip. It's a big question mark. <laughs> <laughs> How close were the sparring sessions? I know they only had two, and from what I've read, the first one, Pauly was out of shape, and he even admitted it, you know, that yeah, yeah. Connor did probably get the better of him, but the second one, he, there's a lot of, like, conflicting back and forth. Like, how comp competitive was it? Was very competitive. It was over like a real fight. I mean, I had to stop the action and tell you guys, you guys got to stop this, because it was really getting out of control. It was like, they were really banging at each other, and they were hitting punches with, when I was saying break, to break out, you know, I would try to break him up, and there punches being thrown. I said, hold, hold, I had to call time. Hey, you guys, we got to keep control here. It was, it was, it was very competitive. It was, it was good. I mean, it, it was good. I'm glad that McGregor was able to see that among uh, against a, a two-time world champion. Uh, and Paulie, we know that Paulie was not in the best of shape, but he was up against uh, McGregor was up against somebody who was a two-time world champion. So it was, it was good for for, for McGregor to get ready to, to be uh, against uh, the best one, Floyd Mayweather. You know, when it was released, there was so much like. It's a lot, so much talk about you know the the clip and everything like that. What did you make of like the reaction when all that happened? Like the clip got released and then subsequent, subsequent uh, I can't even talk right now. Look yeah. at that, you know, I'm so tired. It, it, it subsequent was, events yeah, yeah. that happened uh, up to the fight. You know, it's uh, something that the fans went to see. It was good for the fight because I mean it, it, it put a lot of tension, a lot of hype to to what what McGregor can do. And I was I said from the beginning, you know, McGregor was a, it's an MMA fighter who can punch. He's knocked out many guys in the MMA, and uh, you know, boxing is different. 
But then again, he wore four ounce gloves in the MMAs. He never wear no eight ounces like he did with Mayweather. But uh, the man can punch. I would say uh, you got to give him a, a puncher's chance because the man was, was, was throwing, he's a good puncher. Uh, but again, stamina is so important in the fight. If you don't have the stamina to go the, 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 the later rounds, that's when your arms start dropping and you can't, you, your brain tells you one thing, but your body tells you another. And that's what happened to McGregor. I think McGregor, you know, gave it all he had. It, it was a good sparring session. I think the sparring partners that he had out there with him were pretty decent. You know, they, they were competitive rounds. Uh, if I was his camp, I would have had him doing uh, 10 rounds more often and have him maybe running a little bit more because he himself said, that he he did not uh, train that he didn't train to go to that level of the 12 rounds. I think it's something he learned. He had a good team. They did a lot of a lot of good preparation for the fight. But but maybe in boxing you have to go a little bit more than they do in MMA because MMA is only five rounds. Here's 12. He himself said he learned a lot from that. I don't know what kind of training they were doing besides the sparring, but I know they had a great team with them. They were always doing something. At what level I don't know. But if he says that he learned a lot from this fight, for preparation, maybe if he does come back one day, you never know. I'm sure he'll raise the bar for stamina. I was surprised with that happening because I saw him in the clips that he would put out and he looked in tremendous shape, absolutely tremendous shape. So it kind of had me wondering, like, okay, why is he getting tired? Because you would think, you know, the, they would take that into account that, you know, the 25-minute mark that he usually gets, they're going to surpass that at some point. What happens in boxing is me being the next fighter. You uh, the adrenaline kicks in, and then the uh, the pressure of the fight, and you got a guy made with in front of you. <laughs> you know, as, as much as you try to keep yourself you know, a little relaxed, don't get too tight. Cause when you get too tight, that's when your your arms get tired. You got to be a little bit more relaxed. And if you're not a fighter in boxing, you're gonna be real tight and real tight. You keep your arms real tight, and all these muscles are all tight. Your body's all tight. Fatigue sets in faster. And it takes a while to be a fighter. You gotta, you gotta fight and have that experience of knowing how to, how to be out there and not get too tired because you, you know you're gonna get tired. You learn that only when, from experience of being in the ring. You gotta go four rounds, six rounds, eight rounds, ten rounds, and you know how to pace yourself without worrying about that tightness. When you have that tightness, I think that's what happened. He was not prepared for a boxing contest like he is MMA, where you're more relaxed with MMA. Here, and MMA is only five rounds. Here we're going 12 rounds. That's a big difference. Were you surprised about the way he fought in terms of him being tight? Because he, I don't know, like to me, when he was walking out, he didn't seem like he was warmed up. Like, I, I don't know, like I didn't see like a, a good sweat on him. And, and then, yeah, he, he did well those first three rounds. But after that, like right away, like the stamina dropped it also. Yeah, well, that's what happened again. Like I said, you, you, you're so tight and you're, 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 you're focused. And, uh, and so right away, you picked that up then in the fight. I, I, I knew that going into the fight, I knew that it, that going into a fight like of this magnitude and him the first time fighting a boxer, I said to myself, if he's going to go into the late rounds, he's going to be in trouble because he's not going to have that stamina. he got to go after me Mayweather, right off the, right off the right, soon as the first bell rings, he got to go after Mayweather, which he did very well the first three rounds. But after that, the fourth round, you see his mouth opening up, the fifth round a little bit more, fatigue starts setting in. You can tell when fatigue starts setting in, now your arms are getting a little bit like you can't do it like you want to do. Your, your mind is telling you to do this, but your body's not letting you. And your legs start to go, you are, they go on you a little bit too. And you got to be moving around a 20 square foot ring. Yeah, you know, they maybe when starts chasing you around, you say, "Oh my God, I don't want to get hit by this guy." And everything changes, but it adds up. Uh, it adds up, but but you know, but he did considering he did very well. He won ten rounds. A lot of people thought maybe it'll go four or five, so he did ten, and that's why people say, you know, we got our money's worth. The most fans, boxing fans themselves, say, you know what? I was satisfied paying the hundred bucks to watch the fight, and we got our money's worth. You know, every round was was exciting. They were waiting for something to happen. They were hoping that, that Mayweather would get knocked out. They were all hoping for that. It didn't happen, but... That's like every Floyd fight. Every Floyd fight. I think that's why people buy Floyd's fights, because yeah. they, they want to see that one punch being landed. But he's so damn good that he doesn't let him. He doesn't let him. He doesn't let him, man. You know, and I saw him the other night at the fight Friday night at the fights here in Vegas and uh, a week after the fight. And uh, he's so relaxed and so calm. I think now that he knows that he's retired, you will see a new Floyd Mayweather, the kind of guy people want to see. A uh, nice, humble guy, very charismatic with everybody, friendly. And that's the kind of fans, that's, that's the kind of fighter fans want to see. Did you, by chance, 
speak to Conor after the fight or even up to this point to just see how he was or, or talk to him at all? No, I have not spoken to him. I didn't have a chance because after the fight I had to go work with ESPN. So I didn't see him then. He took off to a wedding. He was going to a wedding out of the country. So I didn't get to see him at all now. But the, for you, you would in a heartbeat go back and help him out again if he were to have a, another boxing fight? Yeah, absolutely. He's a, he's a gentleman. He was a great student. He listened to me. He wanted to learn as much as he could from the sport and he respected me like a like any other fighter has in the past, he, he listened to everything. By the time I had to tell him something, he would listen. I would go into that corner. I would tell him, you keep doing this. I'm going to take a point. And doing one of the sparring sessions, I did take a point from him. You know, yes, so he got a feel of what it's like in the real game. If you'll be uh, doing stuff that's going to cost you points, I said, I'm taking a point right here. And, and then I went to the corner and told him, this was going to happen in the real fight. This could cost you a fight. If it goes to distance, that one point deduction can make a difference. What did he do? It was just uh, hitting on the, on the clinch or hitting a uh, punch behind the head. In the I saw that in the Floyd fight. He did it like some hammer fist. No, no, and no, but this was just yes, like regular punches behind yeah. the head. Or it could have been a, it could have been a, a break. I told him break it. They didn't break it. They threw. He threw a punch. I stopped and took a point. It's to show him. You know, and, and it worked out good. And I loved working with him. He was an excellent student. His team was just like the best. I mean, they're very respectful, all of them. I, I had a lot of fun. I did one of my better... Uh, sparring sessions I've had, you know, with working with amateur kids in the gym, but this was a good one because McGregor fighting Mayweather, that was like the tops. <laughs> well, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> it was a fun event overall. Yeah, yeah. Joe, as always, thank you so much. I really yeah, yeah. appreciate it. Here with Joe Cortez in Las Vegas. I'm Marcos Viegas. Thanking you guys at home for watching us over here at Fight Up TV.